inheritance from my father. And as he gave us this to my brother, sister, and me, mm -hmm. they said, well, you have to add value to this because it was only sugar cane uh, what we had. I have about uh, 50 hectares, it's about 25 acres, I think. So more or less. And uh, it was all, all only with I start thinking about what I'm going to do with this because at that time my father was still living and well I let him continue the work and uh, at the year 2000 I start making an evaluation. I have no idea of farming and I was scared about worms and uh, get dirty you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so and uh, well, I decided not to only to continue with the work my father has started. <laughs> I decided also to become organic, mm. and this is more difficult because I, I here nobody has idea of organic farming. But uh, this uh, farm was occupied by the guerrilla uh, during twelve years of the conflict. And my father had negotiated with the guerrilla to let the, our workers come to work so that they can uh, feed the family. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they say, okay, but you are not allowed and your family is not allowed to visit here. So only the administrator was the one who was uh, controlling everything. And we continue paying the workers and all the, the, the work. As I did the analyze, what shall I do with this, I noticed that uh, the soil was uh, sand, was not soil anymore. Mm -hmm. If you have noticed, our neighbors, they have a lot of uh, soil on top of the sugar cane because what they are doing is they are selling sand. And this land, was the land that my brother and sister got inheritance and they sold to the co-op that is my neighbor now. Mm -hmm. And I was the one who said, no, I'm, I will continue. And that's why I said, well, I have to become organic so that I can restore the soil. People to really be trained, you know, they can do here at the farm herbicides, fungicides, uh, compost, uh, liquid fertilizers, and well, they also dominate so many crops. So if I close the farm or I die, they will not die with me. They will have a lot of opportunities. And that was my vision, you know, to care for the environment, to care for my people, and care for me too, because <laughs> I, uh, if I enjoy the work I am doing, then I will really make a lot of effort to see how can I do this. That is the reason why I was traveling to India, to learn also from India. India is the biggest producer of indigo, only they don't export too much because uh, they, uh, make the, uh, they use the block printing for the indigo and other natural mm -hmm. dye stuff. They, they have lac, they have uh, mother, a lot of things in India. Uh, probably worldwide are the best uh, uh, dyers in the world. And but they are my competitors, but they are my friends. Because when I go to India, I visit them and I, they know that I, I, I am also working with indigo, but I am very small compared to them. Only my quality is so high that the buyers, when they come to India, they say, well, I want <laughs> indigo, but <laughs> we want Salvadorian quality. Hmm. So it's already well known uh, in the world. 